Okay, so you have chosen a card. That card is the Seven of Diamonds. I say watch very carefully. I'll take the Seven of Diamonds, place it in the center of the pack. And despite the fact you just watched it go in there, it will rise up through all the cards. It will find a loophole in the laws of physics that we all know and stand by and make its way back to the top of the pack. Which is pretty strange. Agreed? I'll try it one more time. I'll place the Seven of Diamonds uh, somewhere near the centre of the pack. I'm estimating slightly, but it's definitely in the middle. Even so, just a snap. The card jumps back up to the top of the pack. Look, let's do it this way. You lift off half the pack, the card goes in, and now you place the cards back on top. Couldn't be any fairer, but the card always finds a loophole and somehow defies the laws of physics and arrives back on top of the pack. Now it's around about this time that you're probably thinking there's probably more than one seven of diamonds, right? So let's eradicate any doubt. Uh, I have here a pen and I like to sign the card across the face. Just like so. Now I want there to be no mistake this time. Watch very carefully the seven of diamonds and when I place it in the middle of the pack you can still see it there. I place it halfway down in these cards. I will place these cards halfway down inside these cards and you can still see your cards sticking out there. Which are fairly and squarely inside the pack now. It would be now impossible for it to be on top now. And it isn't the top card is the nine of spades. Um, then if I get rid of the nine, the new top card is the five of clubs. But if you watch carefully, do this. The card becomes the top card once again. But of course, the top card you're holding in your hand, and it is of course the signed seven of diamonds. And at that point, people tend to get a little bit um, overexcited. It's a uh, quite a big moment. See, I'd like to try one more thing, uh, but before I do, did I show you um, the card case? I'll show you the card case. Uh, the card case has a large hole uh, cut in it here. Hope you can see that. A large hole cut in the case, and uh, that, that will become important in a moment. In the meantime, let's take this uh, Seven of Diamonds, and I want you to watch very carefully. The Seven of Diamonds will be placed, um, I mean, I'm estimating somewhat, but somewhere near the center of the pack. That's about as close to the middle as I can get without physically counting through all the cards. It goes into the center of the pack and of course we now place it inside the card case uh, with the hole in it. And um, thanks to the hole of course you'll be able to uh, monitor the top of the pack. Uh, and despite these uh, stringent conditions, the cards in the center of the pack which is now locked inside the card case, it's slight of hand proof the card will find a loophole in the laws of physics that we know and stand by and rise back to the top of the pack just like so and of course I'm um, open the case here and uh, show you there's the, uh, the case that can be fully examined and there is uh, the signed card unmistakably risen back to the top of the pack very strange but let's not stop there. Let's take it one step further. If you watch just here, I do this, I get one more seven. And I do this, I get two sevens. And uh, the last seven, I riffle. Just a little snap. And uh, there, of course, is the final seven. That's all four sevens. And in this particular routine, uh, everything can now be examined. The deck, uh, the box, the signed card, uh, you're clean and ready to move on. So, there you have it.